one of my greatest wish was to go over to Singapore to celebrate Christmas. Because my wife and children and grandchildren are in Singapore. And they have been in Singapore since the, uh, uh, the borders closed in February last year, in February 2021. So it's almost two years already. So it was my prayer from the beginning of two, uh, last year that I can set, spend uh, Christmas with them in person in Singapore. So it was a great joy that I <coughs> heard that, oh, they're going to have Singapore and Malaysia are going to have VTL, which is the vaccination travel lane. So for people who are fully vaccinated, that means three doses, and they can go over without having to have quarantine, which is great. And come back, don't get quarantine. I mean, I, I don't like quarantine. I don't know about you, but I think that is horrible. So, so, so that was my wish. So when that came, I was so happy. So I, I, read this, I, I, I bought the ticket. And then a, a few weeks later, new rules came out. And it says, only certain flights are VTL flights. The rest are not. Okay, And the flight that I, I registered happened to be the VTL flight. But they kicked me out. So I have to argue with the airlines. And, and, then, and finally, I got back to where I was, which is a VTL flight. Okay. So, so then I discovered that it's not that easy to, to apply. There are about 10 different uh, ten documentations I need to submit, like immunization, and then I have to get a VTL pass, then the pre uh, departure swap, uh, by uh, arrange for the arrival swap. Okay, so I, I'm 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 so eager to go there. I'm willing to go through all that. Okay, so then they say, okay, you have to apply for a VTL a pass. Okay, and VTL pass can only apply initially. They say that two to sixty days before. Then they change the rule that says one to seven days. So when I apply and I send in the one, they say that you need uh, to have a full vaccination uh, certificate. So I am fully certified. So I have my my sister who has my name. Okay, but for some strange reason, my sister which has my name. Okay, when I ask for a, <coughs> a PDF file, it has Dr. Alex Tang Tahon. Okay, my, my name on the passport is only Tang Tahon. So somehow they have this Dr. Alex Tang there, which is not in the passport. So the Singapore uh, VTL uh, says no, rejected because the name is not according to the passport. And that was a shock and a challenge to me, because if I look at the, uh, my sajara, it says my name, you know. But when you convert to PDF, got extra one, my Dr. Alex Tang. So I don't know how, to, how, how do you solve this problem. Okay, how do you change the name on a PDF? when the name on my sajara is not normal. Okay, this is, this is like a mission impossible uh, task, you know. So, of course, I wrote, I, I contact my sajara. My sajara says, okay, uh, go to the website. So I go to the my sajara website. There's no such things under, so I, uh, I inform them. I inform them under others that I have brought this problem. Okay, and then uh, I have only four days before the, they close the VTL pass application. Okay, so four days. And it take about two weeks for my sajitra uh, uh, help desk to answer me. 
And the reply I received from them is this, we have received your query. It, we are very busy at this moment, so it would take us about one month before we can look into that. So I call Singapore, and Singapore says, go to the website. So I went to the website. Singapore was very fast. Okay, you put in your query, the website. Within half an hour, you get back the answer. The answer says, oh, we are very busy at this moment, so we'll come back to you in one week's time. Say efficient. So we pray, and I get my uh, uh, prayer partners and the cell groups, and we prayed, and we prayed. It's like, how do you change a name in the PDF? You know, it's not only change the name. I mean, if I change the whole name, yes, that's good. But if the name is correct, but when the PDF conversion, something, it was added, added there. And my wife says, cannot, lah, no way you can do that. Until on the last day, on the last day, uh, I was connected to somebody, and somebody managed to get into the deep into the bowels of my surgery and change it. So that on the night before the flight, I, I was not sure I was going here. Yeah. Really packed already. But finally, on the day of the flight, I got the approval. Praise the Lord. Amen. I mean, it's not spectacular but for me it's a mission impossible uh, okay for to go into the bowels of my surgery and change <laughs> and not remove the doctor Alex from that from the PDF you know not from the my certificate doesn't have that I don't know how the PDF has that so prayer is important I mean uh, I think God is trying to have fun and uh, uh, making life difficult for me but you know, I, I believe that prayer, and that's why I want to talk about prayer. The light in the Lord's prayer. Dynamic activities in the Lord. So we are all very familiar with the Lord's prayer. Okay, so I just want to, uh, uh, this is the church of Paternoster. Okay, this is, uh, uh, a few years ago I, I visited Israel, and this is on the Mount of Olive. And this is a church that's only dedicated to the Lord's Prayer. And if you can look at the, the, this, and you can see that on top, on the uh, left-hand top, is that's a, uh, the entrance to the church. And then on the uh, uh, right hand, right, yeah, right. And then the lower part is where the grotto, okay, where the sermon, Lord, the, Jesus supposed to teach the sermon, the prayer, the Jesus prayer. And then you can see that other parts of the church, the center part is where all inside the church are the Lord's prayer in different languages. Okay, we actually found one in Malay, we found one in Chinese. Okay, and the two that you see on the uh, left side is prayer in Greek and in Latin. So that is the Lord's Prayer in the church in the Lord's Prayer. It's, it's worth visiting. Okay, so this is the Lord's Prayer. Okay, let's pray together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins. Listen, forgive those as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. Now, and forevermore. Now, we have been praying this and we are very familiar. But today I want to just to highlight there are actually three versions of the Lord's Prayer. 
what is found in Matthew, which is the earlier one, and then what is found in Luke chapter 11, and what is found in this book called the Dark Okay, this is pronounced the Dark not Dai Da Chi, which is a Greek book written. Uh, in the uh, early 1st and 2nd century by uh, the teaching of the 12 apostles. Okay, let's, let's look at this. How, what are these differences? If you look at Matthew chapter 6, verse 9 to 13, you can see that this is the Lord's Prayer. Then you look at Luke chapter 11, verse 2 to 4. And you see that actually there's a bit of difference in the Lord's Prayer. Okay, you can see the, they are common, but in Matthew, they says, Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Okay. In uh, Matthew, it says, Forgive us our debts, or in King James Version, our trespasses. While Luke says, Forgive us our sins. And uh, Matthew says, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. But Luke, lead us not into temptation. So why is this difference? Okay? Why, why, why does the Lord's Prayer, the, is, it, is it because the, the, the Bible is not correct? Or is there any significance? And I believe it is. I believe it is. I believe the reason why is that if you look back into the text, you see that the mature version of the Lord's, what we call the Lord's Prayer, was actually part of the Sermon of the Mount. It's on the mountain. What we call the mountain uh, Lord's Prayer. And the audience are Jews who are very familiar with the Torah, they're very familiar with the law, which are very religious people who, 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 attempt, or, uh, who attended all the cultic temple observances. It's like just now in Exodus. Okay? They hear the law okay, through Moses, the Torah. And they know that what the Lord Jesus is telling them is actually the righteousness of God supersedes our behavior. So it's not just how you behave, but how does the Lord affect your behavior. It's not just the right behavior, sacrificing, uh, uh, paying your temple tax, but how are you worshipping the Lord? And are you worshipping the right God? So that is the main trust. That's why your sins or your trespasses because they know that if they go against the Torah, they trespass against God. So you see that actually it's a separate sermon by itself. Okay, even though we call it the lost sermon, it's actually directed to the Jews and says that you know, how you should pray. Okay. So it, the lost prayer is never a formula for us to follow and repeat. But actually what is uh, preached in Matthew is actually a directive. This is how you should pray, you know. Okay, don't follow the formula that the priests and all these are using. Pray. This is how you should pray that God is the righteousness. Luke, on the other hand, Luke is sermon on the plain. And the audience are Gentiles, which means that they would not have much uh, background on Jewish teaching. Temple, Torah, they don't have much, but they will be exposed to other religions like Baal, 
Okay, like the other one. So, so it is the main idea on the Lord's Prayer on by Liu is on the grace of God. It's on the God's grace that He will bring all people into His household, into His kingdom. So you see that the focus on the uh, Liu's uh, Lord's Prayer is and and. Jesus actually never teach them how to pray. But then they press him and says, you know, how, Lord, how do we pray? Eh? How, how, do we, how do we pray correctly? And then he says, when you pray. Okay, notice the, the word that uh, Luke says, when you pray, in response, to, you know, ask him how to pray. So it's when you pray, say this. This is how you pray. So you see that there is a difference between Matthew and Liu. And the Dake is the, the, after uh, the, the early church, okay, and the teaching of the early church actually is codified in this Dake, which is uh, written supposedly by the apostles. And they're actually supposed to pray the Lord's Prayer three times a day. And what is most interesting is that they add the doxology. For thy is the kingdom and the glory forever. Okay? You, I mean, when we pray the Lord's Prayer, we always include, for yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory now and forever. Amen. But this is not found in Luke or in Matthew. This is actually part. So what we are praying is actually a uh, a uh, sort of a, a amalgate or merger of all the three prayers. And that's not, not nothing wrong with that. I think that's the great Lord's Prayer. Okay? But to find that the focus is on righteousness of God, on the uh, grace of God, and the glory of God. So when we pray the Lord's Prayer, we must understand this is what is important. That firstly, the gospel message of the kingdom of God is summarized in prayer form. So by merging Matthew, Luke, and the Didache, we are actually, uh, the Lord's Prayer is actually the gospel in a nutshell. Okay, the whole gospel, you can, if you take quietly, you have time, go through and see. That's the whole gospel in a nutshell summarized in a prayer form that Jesus' message of the kingdom of God. Okay. Tertullian, one of the early church fathers, will say that this is the epitome of the whole gospel. When you pray the Lord's Prayer, this is the epitome. And Augustine, okay, the source of all prayers. Okay. So everybody has a great respect for the Lord's Prayer. The other point I want to make is that the Lord's Prayer is actually not the Lord's Prayer. It's the disciples' prayer. Because not as we pray or as I pray, Jesus pray, or but you pray. That means for us, is rather than the Lord's Prayer, is our prayer. The disciples' prayer. Okay, because you look at that, you look at the Lord's Prayer, it's actually by the disciples, not by Jesus. And the third point I, I want to emphasize again is that it's always used in the plural. Our Father, give us our daily bread. This is actually meant for community. Okay? The Lord's Prayer is not for, I mean, yes, we can use it for individual. But it's actually meant for a community like us, the household of God. So every time we pray the Lord's Prayer, even though we are alone, we are praying with millions and th uh, of people, of other Christians, also, also praying because it's a communal prayer. And if this, you look at it carefully, there are two components. Focus on God and focus on self and others. 
Okay, so they are, you can feel that the first three uh, uh, petitions, the first four, are directed towards God. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Then the uh, next four, next three, is for us. Our daily bread, forgiveness, and lead us not into temptation. Okay, so that is uh, important because you, it is always God and man. So that is the completeness of the Lord's Prayer. And of course, it's taught by Jesus for us. So, so what are the seven dynamics? Okay, now why am I telling you all this? We can look at the Lord's Prayer as a spectrum of light. Now we say light is white, isn't it? But you know that you know in uh, primary school you see if you use a, a, spe- a prism, you can actually see all the colors. And if you use uh, the the uh, look at the Lord's Prayer, there are actually dynamic activities in the Lord's Prayer. You have Approaching, you have adoring, you have acknowledging, you have accepting, you have asking, you have admitting and adhering. No wonder the Tulan says this is the complete gospel. No wonder uh, Augustine says this is the beginning of all prayer. Because the Lord's prayer is. I mean, we are so used to it that we don't realize that there's so much treasure in the Lord's Prayer. So, the Lord's Prayer starts with approaching God in a direct and intimate way. Our Father, Abba. Not many uh, religions call God Abba. That we can approach God in a direct and intimate way. That we know that God will listen to us. God will not be too busy doing other things that, you know, uh, wait, I'll I'll, I'll listen to you later. That we can approach God in a direct and intimate way. And that is uh, our, as we pray, we adore the Creator and the Mighty. I mean, if you look at all around you and you see the creation, there's nothing we can do except fall down in adoration because mighty and great is the God of all creation. Yeah. And we acknowledge his work and his worth in praise and worship. Sometimes you think of all the things God has done for us. Okay. For me, uh, the simple task or the simple joy of celebrating last Christmas with my wife, my two daughters, and my two grandchildren was so beautiful. That is a milestone in my life. I know that it's God who make it possible, not what I did or what anybody else did. And we also accept from God God's your will be done. Knowing that God is in charge of our life, God has a good interest at heart, but sometimes life is not as we want it to be. But knowing that God is also in charge. So accepting from God's own situation. And Admitting sin and seeking pardon. That we need to acknowledge that we are sinners and we are keeping sin, we keep sinning. Just because we are Christian, we are not perfect. So we need to acknowledge our sin, confess it before God, say I'm sorry, repent, and accept His forgiveness. And asking for our needs. Okay, there's nothing wrong with asking. So keep on asking God. God will not, because God's challenge, challenge is, see whether you, you want to test me, 
I will open the, the treasures of heaven. Okay. You want to test God to see how much you can give? And uh, adhering thick and thin that always stick to God and says, like uh, John says, you know, when uh, Jesus says that he must die and uh, all his followers who ran away. And Jesus looked around and said, hey, all the followers are gone already, except John and Peter. And he says to Peter, why don't you run away too? But Peter says, who, where do I go? For you have the word of life. So the, in the, as we look at the Lord's Prayer, all these things are there. So it's not cohesion. Okay? And the Lord's Prayer is not magic formula. Okay? The Lord's Prayer is also known as our Father. So sometimes we repeat the word our Father, our Father many times. Hopefully it's like a magic, uh, uh, a chant like that. It's not that. Okay? It's not vain repetition. It's not. It has meaning. Is meaningful in that. So during this time of the pandemic, okay, we pray. And we should be praying the Lord's Prayer. Because it is a personal, Lord's Prayer is a personal, even though it's communal, it's a personal uh, prayer between you and God. A very intimate prayer. J. Parker okay, talks about it's not too much to say that God made us to pray. That prayer is not the easiest but the most natural activity in which we ever engage. And that prayer is a measure of us all in God's sight. Many of us find praying difficult. But Parker says it's actually not difficult. It's a natural activity because we are all made to pray. Now he even likened prayer to breathing. Okay? We breathe naturally. So prayer should be natural. So prayer is a natural action. That as we pray, okay, if we, we can use words that we like, we can use as we normally do, or we can use prayer, prayer books. There are people who have written beautiful prayers and use their prayers. There's no harm. Or if you don't know what, use the Lord's Prayer. Because that is how we pray. And the Lord's Prayer is a useful template for our prayer life. So the Lord's Prayer should be put to service to direct and spur on our praying constantly. To pray especially if you're not too sure what is the, how to pray. In terms of it, it's a sure way to keep our prayer within God's will. Okay. Now, if you're not too sure, you cannot construct your prayer, just pray the Lord's Prayer. To pray through it, expanding the clauses as you go along. Sometimes as you pray through it, you expand to it. You know? <clears throat> Let your will be done, but Lord, I'm, I'm having trouble finding your view. Can you expand on it? It's a sure way to prime the pump when the prayer dries up and you find yourself stuck. We never get beyond this prayer. Not only in the Lord's first lesson in prayer, it's in all other lessons too. Lord teaches to pray. So again, a reminder that we need to pray. Yes. And prayer is the natural. And God will help us to, to pray. Yes, the Lord teaches us to pray. So let us end this by praying the Lord's prayer again, together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. 
Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, now and forevermore. Amen.